Hello and welcome to DM Talks, where we're gonna look at the Scandinavian. And to be honest, most players with white don't like to face the Scandinavian. It's an annoying opening. So let's see what we can do with white here. We have an impressive takedown by Michael Adams against uh, the pretty strong, uh, I did, did don't know him very well, uh, Daniel Howard Fernandez, uh, English uh, GM. Uh, uh, but he, since since that game, he won all the other games, so he's not probably a pretty strong player. Also, he's raising his 25-18, which is suggests that he can he can definitely play chess. So let's uh, let's take a look at what to do with White, how to destroy the Scandinavian, how to kill it, how to dismantle it, how to maul it. Yes, let's go. Um, the reason why White don't like the Scandinavian is because Black sort of disrupt uh, the, the setup. Uh, most white players like to play sort of uh, fixed uh, lines like uh, the, the Sicilian where you know this structure, you have the knight on d4, knight on c3, and you have some bishops, you decide where you want to put those, uh, and, and you probably have a favorite uh, space for some of them. Uh, or the, you have a line against the French that gives you the kind of attacking chances you, or the kind of grind you like, and, it's, and, and against the Karakan, you can also choose what to do. But against Scandinavian, there's nothing, nothing to choose because uh, you have to take, after this, uh, White is already, uh, black is already equalized. He's just got a Karakan advanced without uh, spending time on the useless C6. So uh, this <laughs> this is, a, or you could play C5 or whatever. So this makes no sense. Uh, Knight C3, then you also got a hypercharged uh, Karakan without C6. So it you have to take. Um, and of course, black can play Knight F6 here, but the main line is, I think Knight F6 is small list. Busted. Uh, I think the the book by Quality Chess on uh, E4. Uh, I think Shaw he more or less kills uh, the Knight F6 variation. I played the, the, his recommendation in Blitz, and and no black players know what to do, and they just die. So it's it's, it's just it seems like this is just killing. You. So this is uh, the situation. Of course, you could try. Uh, and here in this game, uh, black just have uh, three options here. You can play queen d6. You can play queen. You can play this move, which was the old uh, Scandinavian. Um, I still believe this is probably the best move. You could also play uh, this move, which has been a, a big favorite of uh, a player like uh, uh, Tivakov, or you can, as he does in this game, play this which has also gotten um, a, a decent uh, amount of followers uh, recently the thing is about this is we got this structure immediately they got black got this d uh, exchange uh, pawn exchange against e4 and and he will sit behind the structure and he will know what to do so it's like uh, system players they don't know they don't need to have a positional sense or anything they can just do what they always do uh, mindlessly which is annoying for white because you want to make them think you want to set them problems they have not had before and and now they sit behind their structure uh, which they know very well, and they play it in every game. There's also you can also get this kind of structure if you play, for instance, the French with e6 and take on e4. Uh, the thing is, uh, Black just took two moves to get the queen back to square one. Uh, that makes somehow no sense in a terrace uh, way. But uh, there is the thing that White got his knight to uh, to c3, where it is in the way of the c pawn the knight in in the caracan white never retreats the knight to c3 if you remember just gonna show you if you remember the caracan uh, after something like uh, like this a knight here and and take and here black has three lines uh knight d7 you can play bishop f5 or you can play the immediately knight f6 and all lines are based on attacking uh, this guy and this guy never goes to this square never not in a single line it makes no sense to go to this square it's not a good square uh, because you basically want the c pawn to participate in the fight for the center either by uh, by going forward or protecting d4 so you don't want the c, c pawn sitting on c2 so so the knight is misplaced on uh, c3 okay so that's 
that's the rationale for, for Black's opening. So, uh, but White just got a lot of moves for free here. Uh, and uh, Black, White should develop fast. This is a rule number one. Develop fast, move fast, and try to push Black's pieces. The thing is, uh, a lot of white players don't like this line also because it involves risk. You have to accept that you to, to play for a win, you will have to to um, to make some weaknesses in your pawn structure, which some players don't like. Um, okay, this is, uh, I think, the main uh, system in this uh, situation. Um, you could also just play like this. It looks very passive and, of course, White must be better after bishop f4 and castle and rook e1, bishop f4 and, and so on. It just simply must be slightly better for white. But black has got his uh, structure uh, with, 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 with these pawns against the, these two pawns. And, um, and he can play that. And you, to be honest, you can't prevent people. If they want to play like this, you can't prevent it. So you just have to learn to play this kind of structure with white. This is uh, one of the things. Uh, and, but you see, if, if black is a good player, like uh, for instance, uh, Tivyakov or something, they will do well with this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, but that's not because of the opening, it's because they are good players. So just to, to make, make that sure. So if you lose against this, the, take a note if it's because you don't understand. Anyway, we're going to help you understand this. Okay, bishop uh, g4, a3. Now this is, um, this is basically the idea um, for white. Push the, the bishops. If he goes to f5, you go knight e5 and g4 or queen f3 or something. And here, uh, for instance, after something like this, white will definitely play g4. Uh, and uh, knight e5 uh, for sure and uh, already threatening something like this or maybe something like this and this is what you are after you you want to push back you you are ahead in development you should be able to to and the bishop can also go here and so on and this the, actually this is, is is very dangerous for black i don't think black can actually survive this so uh maybe he can but it's, it's it, so so. Why Black's idea is is um, after this move is to take and take and uh, of course if, if Black takes here you take here and he's, he's he's lost so he has to do something else. But this was always the idea. Um, so Black just plays for this square. He plays uh, this and this is sort of what we call Kappa Blanca chess. You exchange one bishop and then you put the pawns on the other and you have only have good pieces you have a sound structure then you play with the pieces you don't need to think about structure because you already have a good structure so you just want to keep your structure intact uh, I, I used to joke this is the kind of uh, opening for people who's got no sense of positional play uh, because they don't need to. So they just, uh, and the, the caracan is a little bit like that, but probably it's not right. But uh, anyway, um, uh, this can be a bit annoying and, uh, and white, we see that white is developing very fast, um, very, very fast. And I be the seven. This is also common. I think uh, if if he goes something like uh, like this, you will play a three and you will accept the double pawn um, because you have strong bishops. Uh, you you should look at the moment. Uh, White's got the bishop pair and he should try to utilize that. Okay. And here we see another thing. White is trying to with every move he makes is trying to play as fast as possible. So he castled queenside. He's getting. Um, this here. Now, after bishop b4, we would move the knight. We we'll move it, and I think we will move it here, to, not to exchange too many pieces. This maneuver can be very annoying at some point, so we have to look out for that. At the moment, we would also just put, move the knight, I think, and let him take here, and we'll probably take back with the f pawn, and uh, and then, then we might have some attack on the f file here. A5. This is a typical uh, thing for black. It's it's the sort of uh, where you move pawns without actually risking something. And uh, but white is also uh, ready to to push pawn. And basically, he wants to push this pawn here and this pawn here, and just destroying the basis of black's pawn structure. This is not so easy to achieve without creating weaknesses. Knight here, and by the way, the most important square in the Scandinavian is always this one. This is the square to look out for. This is the square to look out for. Import this square. 
right? D5. Uh, so so you, you have to, to accept that the, a lot of fight is going on over there, this fight. If you want to take control of it with the pawn, like here, there are two things happens. Uh, one is 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 that it, you have to move the knight first to play c4, so you will give back some of the time you gained by him moving his queen around. That's one thing. Another thing is when you play c4, this one will not have pawn cover anymore and might be weak. So two things to look out for. But of course, one of White's uh, main strategic idea is to bust black open with c4 and d5. This is the kind of thing you want to do. Okay, now this situation here, we have uh, an important moment where white plays king b1. This is often an important move to avoid this guy being threatened uh, at a later point. At the, after knight b, black is, is simply threatening this move um, here. And, and, and if, if it takes, you will take with the queen here and uh, threaten both the knight, the bishop, and ah, oh, stop doing that soon. And here, right? So, uh, so this is the kind of thing you should look a little bit out for. I don't know why I did that. Uh, that the, the a two, and you don't really want to go to, into the ending because you don't have any edge in the ending usually. It's not some. So king b one, important move. A four. Uh, I'm not sure I like this. Uh, it's often played by black uh, to go here and. Sometimes black is able to make this bishop bad, and then it, it makes sense. But on the other hand, it it makes the pawn weak, and it sort of um, takes the sting out of uh, of the other pawn coming. A3 stopping the pawn, um, and bishop e7, h4, and this is whenever white has time, he just push, 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 and he's of course uh, ready to 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 try to see if he can. He can, he can gather some momentum over there. Knight B, all looks very logical. White takes. Um, here, uh, taking with the queen is possible. Um, I think white would just go here and, uh, and, and say that, okay, we, we still have uh, the attack. We have the g5, we have h5, we have g6, and so on. We might also have, have this move uh, at some point. Uh, so this is, is, is still, uh, for instance, after something like this, uh, you probably go g5, and, and black should be, be careful here. It's, it's a dangerous position for him. Uh, bishop is coming to f4, bishop might be coming here, and so on. So you're still looking to blast him. Okay. Um, so he takes back with the knight. This is typical and saying, okay. Uh, and, and one of the things that's also annoying about the Scandinavian is black is always trying to exchange pieces because white is pushing his pawns. So he's creating weaknesses and black is just exchanging, exchanging, exchanging. And then uh, at the end, you end up with some uh, weak pawn somewhere you lose and then you lose the end game and you're just disgusted with this way of playing. Uh, so this is one of the things here where black is, is going in, but it's not always clear that uh, the exchanges are good for black. And here, and here uh, you could make a big argument for taking with the F pawn. Uh, this looks, I kind of like this. Uh, something like, like this looks really, really, really scary. Uh, you might go D5, for instance. Uh, and, and I think white is, is, is clearly in the driver, driving seat. I don't see where this guy can go and be safe. Uh, I think white is, is more or less winning the attack here. Uh, also, uh, the H file is a problem. The bishop here is a problem. And uh, very important note, um, opposite colored bishops are usually in favor of the attacker. Actually, it decreases the chances of a draw when we have opposite colored bishops in the middle game. Important thing. And also, initiative is much more important than an, an attack is much more important than material with opposite colored bishops. So it's a completely different game when there is opposite colored bishops. Important to know. We, we had a lot of videos where we discussed this, but uh, it still seems to be difficult for a lot of players to, to, to just grasp that, that well, with opposite colored bishop, the rules change completely. You have to go for the attack. You have to go for the initiative. If you can get a position where you attack and the opponent cannot attack, you will have one piece extra on one of the color complex. Okay. So, but uh, anyway, um, uh, Adams takes here. 
uh, and uh, is 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 basically ready for for probably d5 uh, and uh, maybe g5 and and sometimes f4 f5 and so on and black does not have at the moment counterplay uh, he, he goes here creating this threat uh, and uh, and and stopping d5 because uh, after something like this uh, well bishop c5 is probably good but Black could also just uh, take here and say, "Okay, we have an ending, uh, and and I'm, then I'm, I'm my opposite bishop, bus, colored bishop is not such a big problem." So, what should White do here? Well, he should go c5. He, you, we, we keep continuing. White has enough firepower to uh, to get going, and this is of course the idea. Uh, this uh, can opener is coming uh, for a position near black. We see this pawn gun sailing away, making uh, the, 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 the sort of uh, exchange, it's casting long, not as attractive. I still think black should cast along here. This would be the best move. And of course you lose a pawn, but uh, this will probably be weak and you will have some sort of Scandinavian that is definitely playable for black uh, at some point here. Uh, instead, um, after f4 he plays b6 and this is just losing um, as it seems because uh, white is 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 landing on the base here uh, this is the beachhead coming boom is is uh, landing hard on uh, on on black's uh, king side uh, the the white squares are are gone uh, black is not uh, really careful and here white shows what it's all about d5 and this is such a nice move uh, just uh, showing why, wh how to play with opposite colors bishop and with black in behind in development. He never found a way, a uh, place for the king. He should have gone queen side. Uh, and in general, that's a little bit of the problem with a5 is is that you lose the flexibility because uh, it's 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 not so easy to, to put the king away somewhere when you your a pawn gun sailing away. Anyway, uh, the threat is 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 this. Uh, you have to do something um, and. And of course, this bishop cannot take here because it's pinned. Uh, if you do something like, uh, for instance, if you do something like this, uh, then probably you can do something like this. And, uh, and, and, and here, bishop is coming, and this is really a disaster uh, for black. Uh, rook is coming here, I think. Yeah, rook is coming here. So, oops, not, that was too far. And like this so and uh, of course killing this guy so this is, is just uh, lost um, so he has to f and there is no defense here actually um, of course castle you go just go d6 he started with f4 changes nothing so they still have the same problem um, and c takes Bishop b5 check. Okay, no castle for black this time. And here uh, black is, if he was able to somehow get this guy to this square without making concessions, he would be fine. It's of course not possible. First of all, white was uh, was threatening uh, this move. Um, and also um, <laughs> a typical, uh, he, he, well, Basically, black is getting sunk here with the ships and still in the harbor. Um, rook here, the next one is coming, and, and black can basically resign. The king is never going out. This this guy will not enter the game. Uh, the way he wraps it up is, is quite nice. But this is how you play against the Scandinavian. Just blast him away, push, 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 and be a little bit careful of black's idea. He wants to exchange pieces. He wants to use utilize the, the d5 square, and, uh, and basically, he want to get into an ending when you have uh, made weaknesses this is a typical thing uh, c6 this is the easiest way to play um, just pushing 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 and, um, and 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 well to be honest that was a little bit uh, hard here and be rook d7 and of course uh, this one is gonna here here and, and maybe here so black resigned here and this was how to dismantle the Scandinavian. We, we might uh, get back with some of the other lines. Uh, this was more like a general approach for white. How how do you actually cross uh, this annoying opening? Um, 
and uh, well, uh, this was a nice way to do it, I think. A great game by uh, my, by Michael Adams, who's uh, often a, a good uh, hero to have with the white pieces uh, because he's, he's the way he plays chess is very instructive. Okay, this was DM Talks. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and sign up for the email list. We will have some exciting news at some point when we get around to it. Thank you for. <laughs>